as an administrator, your basic charge is to at all points ensure that you know things are kept in a fine balance in a place like Delhi. Mm -hmm. But I'd be curious, even as it's the capital, what is your view on the current state of the government? We keep looking at scams after scams. Probably now we've had a season long of a year and a half where one scam or the other erupts. How do you think with that kind of situation will India prosper at the level where it has? Everything is being really overplayed. It isn't that everything that was done was uh, improper or there were necessarily mm. some financial imp uh, you know, uh, improprieties which were committed. Right. Because this is a matter uh, which has to be investigated. But the way it has been put out and in various reports and so on and so forth that everything uh, happened like this in a negative slant. Yeah. But that's just has, common uh, wealth. Uh, that has really caused a unnecessary feeling of demoralization in the fellow citizens of our great country. Right. And uh, India today really should be proud of the fact that we have outstanding human resources. They are among the most brilliant that uh, are there in the world. Mm. They are great entrepreneurs. Uh, they are into you know new industries, manufacturing, innovation. Y yet they have that fear that there is always going to be a, a, a bit of red tapism that they'll have to face in India. I mean, everybody till today, for example, you were in Rhinebacks again, Standard Chartered. The business mind has always been, let's work despite the government. Let's ignore the government. We don't know how much they'll give us, how mm. much uncertainty there will be. So there's always been that attitude, right? Basically, the industry itself acknowledges that tremendous amount of deregulation took place, yes. which was of great help. The trip today is that the prices are, you know, the cost of money is high. And the reform but, is slow. Well, further reforms means labor reforms or something. Yeah, which With hasn't higher happened and fire, but, in India. But nobody actually, even throughout Europe, you don't have a higher and fire system. Mm. If a worker is not working properly, you have to mentor him, try and improve his conduct. Mm. And only then and then, you need to uh, actually you know, send him out of your workplace. So we have, we have not adopted a very harsh attitude. We want the labor also to feel very much a part and parcel of the process to benefit from the fruits and profits that they generate. Mm. So I wouldn't say that uh, lack of labor reforms is a disincentive. But cost of money, yes, I've heard from many people. One of the things which is hitting us is global rise in commodity prices, which sure. translates also into high price of imports and consequently a high price push on our economy. Yeah. So the, when the inflation starts rising, then the government has to try and uh, basically staunch that, you know, increase in um, Yeah, which, which they're flows, doing, however many believe rates, quite ineffectively. Interest rates. Uh, and so that is what the people are cribbing about, that with high interest rates, how can we access bank credit and basically improve our manufacturing capacities and manufacturing prices also at the end of it. Uh, you were pretty vocal during the recent blasts and you said while we've had investigation, we've got intelligence, it's not actionable. Does that get you extremely worried about a city like Delhi? No. I'll say that vis-a-vis uh, -vis the security of the national capital, a lot has happened basically since 2008 because uh, we started really gearing up security for the Commonwealth Games. Yes. And I can tell you that between 2008 and 10, if any major thing passed, of course, September 2008 when we had few blasts here yes, in Delhi. Yes, yes. And the one earlier this year. And the one now in, in uh, the Delhi High Court. Yes. One is that a lot of upgradation has been done. 480 odd vulnerable points have been identified, comprising of uh, major government buildings, hotels, marketplaces, malls, cinemas, and they are all being constantly, you know, monitored by anti-terrorism officers posted in every police station. Mm -hmm. Delhi is unique in the fact that uh, in the 155 police stations we have, every police station has an anti-terrorism officer designated. He has a quick response vehicle also with automatic weapons and other things. And he's going around all these vulnerable points to yeah. see can the security be improved. But then then you a think lot of CCTV coverage is happening now. Right. Access control devices are being put. But with all this great infrastructure, you think intelligence is failing then? No, I'd put it that much more of this surveillance architecture still needs to be put in place. I see. There is no substitute to human intelligence. Yes. So we have what we call an eyes and ears scheme. And we have more than 200,000 people who are now part of this. There are 2,200 police beats. Each beat has roughly about 100 people who may be tea stall owners, auto rickshaw drivers, yeah. you know, small, petty 
trying to get shops citizens to do some to work. Keep on informing if they are noticing anything which is suspicious in their day to day life. If you had to choose between your administrative life and the corporate life that you live, which one would you pick? Administrative. It yeah. would always be that, yeah. yeah. I joined the administrative service in 1961 because I just felt like uh, being able to interact with people and help them out. Yeah. That yeah. was the main reason. Great. Thank you very much, sir. Thank Appreciate you. your being on the Thank you. Thanks. Very kind of you. Nice. Thank you. Here you've got an explosion of entrepreneurship, all kinds of new people doing new things. All of them are facing corruption, all of them are very fed up with it. Look, we have the luxury of dealing with a country of over a billion people. You should do the job you're doing and do it better than you're doing, rather than worry about other things. I quite enjoy what I'm doing now. What I've noticed over the years of teaching is that uh, everyone has a different style of putting. And what we notice is some people would like to stand a little far away from the ball versus someone who might prefer to stand a little closer with the arm straight down. Now for both these uh, people who would like to putt in different ways, uh, the key is the stroke. So what I would tell you this time is that when you take your stance and you feel that your arms are a little stretched out or the putter is a little away from you, try to make sure that the putter goes back in with the shoulders, hits and then goes in. So it's on an arc. It's going inside, square, back inside. You don't have to try to do it with your wrist because your putter is outside the line of your shoulders. It would automatically go on an in, square, in path. But if you want to try a stroke which is a straight back, straight through, make sure that you stand closer to the ball so that your arms are hanging straight down. So from the side on view there, you can see my arms are straighter down, absolutely straight over here like this. So if your arms are hanging straight down, it would be very easy for me to take the putter back straight and forward going absolutely straight on a straight line. So the straight back and straight through stroke is more for a person who's got his arms straight down, the putter being away from you. And for, for that person, I think, the easier uh, method is to go inside, square, inside. So I hope that solves uh, the complication about the straight back, straight through and the inside, square, inside stroke. So go ahead and use your own style to putt and hopefully you make better putts. <laughs>